Haunted arcade machines, possessed computers, the Microsoft Office of Tortured Souls. Brace yourself for six tales of digital terror. For most of us, our experiences of horror in games are measured, controlled and sanitised. Jump scares might increase our pulse rate, but nothing more. Once you turn the power off, you're safe again. But there are some stories that take us down a darker path. In tonight's video, we'll be looking at six stories of digital terror, which are either inexplicable, odd, or just pleasingly unsettling. Some involve restless spirits communicating with us from beyond the grave. Some are games which show us a bleak vision of our own future. And others, well, others were made up by bored children on Reddit. Or maybe they're the work of forces beyond mortal comprehension. The stories that follow are folk tales for a digital age. Urban legends that have outgrown their humble beginnings, becoming more powerful and malevolent with each telling. And if you have trouble sleeping after hearing them, remember, they're only stories. At least, we hope they are. <laughs> our first story might make you think twice about spending your money on a mysterious, inexplicable new game. Most of you will be too young to remember the unique thrill of discovering a new arcade game, of excitedly pushing your coins into the slot, electrified by the promise of new adventures. And few of us would ever stop and ask, where did this machine come from? Because why would we? Surely. There's nothing frightful about an arcade cabinet. According to the legend, Polybius was a mysterious game that appeared in arcades during the 1980s. Anyone who played it would become addicted, and those that did would suffer from seizures and nightmares, some even attempting suicide. And then when they returned to play Polybius again, the machines were gone. Removed by mysterious men in black suits, leaving no trace, they were ever there. This tale goes as far back as 1998, when a mysterious description appeared on vintage gaming website coinop.org. The 1998 post was shared on Usenet forums in 2000, and by 2003, it had become an established internet urban legend. Yet despite widespread proliferation of this story, nobody has ever found an original copy of the machine, and nobody even knows what kind of game it is. That might make you more skeptical, or it might be exactly the point. The suggestion is that the mysterious men in black were using the machines to perform illicit mind control experiments. This is all obviously some kind of sinister plot, right? Well, yes and no. While there is some evidence of the US government testing unwitting subjects back in the 1950s, there's no link to Polybius. And the versions of the game seen on YouTube are merely simulations designed to mimic the vector and raster graphics the game supposedly used. Combine this with a few arcade-related moral panics in the early 1980s, as well as the sudden recall of the 1985 game Poly Play, which Polybius could be confused with, and it's easy to see where this story comes from. So there you go, perhaps Polybius never existed at all, or perhaps that's exactly what the government wants you to think. Next, I've got a question for you. What would the world look like after 2,000 years of nuclear war, famine and death? A world where the polar ice caps have melted 20 times and the doomed remnants of our world are fought over by three superpowers locked in a state of eternal war. Well, a Redditor named Lycerius found out by playing Civ 2 for 10 solid years. This vision of the future is an endless military deadlock between three superpowers, each competing for what scant resources remain. Most of the world is an uninhabitable wasteland, and 90% of the population has died, either from nuclear annihilation or famine. Nothing will ever get any better, and the war will never end. In Lycerius' words, it's a hellish nightmare of suffering and devastation. Why is this one terrifying? Because it offers a tangible vision of something horrific, even if the idea of Vikings with nuclear weapons is slightly unconvincing. It's a way of filling in the blanks if you ever wondered what would happen if everyone started pushing their red buttons, although in truth, it'd probably be even worse. This state of existence in Civ 2 spawned its own subreddit called the Eternal War. 
is almost like a puzzle, and the finest military minds in Civ have dedicated themselves to resolving this conflict. It's compelling enough to have even resulted in stories, spin-offs, and a dedicated ebook. Even Civ creator Sid Meier has commented on it. And if you want to experience the Eternal War yourself, the link is in the description. And if you're curious, the Doomsday Clock, which measures the likelihood of a man-made global catastrophe, is currently at two and a half minutes to midnight, the closest it's ever been since 1954. Way back in 1984, a British man called Ken Webster set up a BBC micro word processor at his home in Doddleston, Cheshire. So far, so normal. However, after leaving the machine unattended overnight, he awoke to find a strange new file saved to the floppy disk. The file contained a poem formatted in a very bizarre way. Some of the lines were even vaguely threatening. Things like, true are the nightmares of a person that fears, safe are the bodies of the silent world. Over the course of the next 15 months, Ken received more than 250 messages from the being who claimed to have lived in the same property back in 1546. It gets stranger though. He attempted to test the connection by communicating via other machines and it worked every time. The messages made specific reference to Ken's girlfriend Debbie and if that wasn't sinister enough, a second, more threatening voice also began to communicate. The voice, named simply 2109 from the year it claimed to be from, was allegedly from an incorporeal race which watched humanity from afar. Some supernatural activity had been reported before this, canned food being moved around, newspapers levitating from the table, and six-toed footprints appearing in the dust. But nothing was as consistent and chilling as the messages. Ken Webster even went on to write a book about his experience, entitled The Vertical Plane. Whether you believe everything that happened, or you think Ken made the lot up, this story stands out for being the first one about a ghost using computers to communicate. In some respects, it's the world's first creepypasta. Sometimes the most frightening things aren't necessarily evil. Sometimes a perfectly normal thing that's quietly, inexplicably wrong can be more unsettling. Our next example is exactly that. The primary antagonist in the story isn't a monster or a murderer, but simply a staircase. It's based on a series of tales from the SCP Foundation website, a deep, exacting collection of user-contributed stories based around a secretive organisation that hides anomalous or supernatural entities away from the public. According to the story, the real staircase is located on the campus of an unknown university. Those lucky enough to find it hear the distressed voice of an unseen child, but descending the stairs never seems to bring them any closer. People have reported descending for hours, but never finding the end point or the weeping child. The depth of this story, if you'll please excuse the pun, is reflected in the stories on the website. It's a more pervasive, detailed version of a creepypasta. And for those who don't know, creepypastas aren't ravioli shaped like cobwebs, but horror-related legends or images that have been copied, pasted and refined via the internet. Essentially modern day, community sourced folk tales. In fact, the main tale in SCP is powerful enough to have spawned numerous games. There's the detailed and varied SCP containment breach and the simple effective SCP-87. There's something about the latter game that makes it especially unsettling. The repetition makes it hypnotic and every small change becomes toe curlingly horrible. The collective power of these stories somehow makes it all feel more real. If you're feeling brave and you really want to know where those noises are coming from, the download links are in the description. Think of a piece of software you use every day, something innocuous like a word processing program or a spreadsheet. Now what if I was to say there was a hidden first person game inside it, a game containing a hall of tortured souls? You'd probably say something along the lines of, why are you telling me this, please get out of my house. But if you've ever used XL95, you were closer to this chilling prospect than you ever knew. The common kids at school urban legend is that the game is hidden in Word 95, and it's irrefutable proof that Bill Gates is Lucifer in casual knitwear. But if you fire up XL, go to row 95 and follow the correct steps, the hall of tortured souls will open up before you. In truth, despite the name, there's nothing especially sinister about this, and nor is it proof 
that Bill Gates is the devil. It's actually something a lot of developers do to credit their own work. There's a flight simulator in XL97 and a racing game in XL2000. But even then, there's still something creepy about this. The name doesn't exactly inspire confidence, and then there's the fact that it looks like Doom, but for accountants. There's even a secret door, behind which you'll find the very tortured souls the title refers to. So while it's not as scary as your friends at school might have made you think, there's something about a whole game being hidden that makes you wonder what else is there, just slightly out of sight. <laughs> We all know World of Warcraft, right? Millions of people have played for quadrillions of hours. Every inch of Azeroth has been explored. Surely there are no secrets left to discover. Or maybe there are. Visit the village of Goldshire at the right time of day and you'll discover something that doesn't make sense. Six very unusual children who apparently hint at something eldritch. If you go to Goldshire at 7am local server time, six mysterious children will appear. Follow them and they'll traverse the path between Goldshire and Stormwind, standing in a distinct pattern whenever they stop. And by distinct I obviously mean secretly evil. And if that's not enough, World of Warcraft also contains a hidden dungeon called the Forgotten Crypt. Inside you'll find the upside down sinners, blinded, handless prisoners left hanging in a dungeon we were never meant to find. Some people say it's just an unfinished part of the game. Others? Others say it's the work of a Blizzard developer who fell into madness. If you follow the mysterious children back to Goldshire after an hour, rumours suggest things get even weirder. You'll hear mysterious voices and unsettling sounds. Perhaps this is some sinister pact on the part of the children, which explains why World of Warcraft is so malevolently addictive. Thanks, evil kids, for making me waste a whole month pretending to be a highwayman in Duskwood. You brat. So there you go, six tales of digital terror guaranteed to make the blood chill pleasurably. Perhaps it's best now if you make yourself a warm mug of cocoa, turn off your device, and try not to think about anything we've discussed. And if by some chance you wake up tomorrow morning and you have an unknown file on your computer, for the love of God, don't read it. Please give us a thumbs up if anything in this video sent a shiver down your spine and subscribe to Logitech G for more deliciously evil updates. It's nothing like a dark bargain or anything weird like that. Promise. Ha 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 